Harper. We are, of course, in Dallas. I'm John Apicello. This is Brooke Leonard. And we are outside the American Airlines complex. It's a, it's a really nice, interesting building. I'll give it that. But that said, I don't think it matters where these games are. No. No. You know what I mean? At Virginia Tech is here, and that's what we're focused on. We could play on a concrete court outside. I think either of these teams would be fine with that. Honestly, maybe better, a little more, <laughs> little more neutral, because as you said earlier at 5 o'clock, there's a lot of Iowa fans. I know There's going to be a lot of Iowa fans with their butts in seats because they play after Virginia Tech LSU. So it's kind of it's interesting. I'll see who they root for. <laughs> most of, most of the... Uh, breakdowns I've done with people coming up to me have been about the Iowa South mm -hmm. Carolina matchup and they all want to know hey can anybody beat South Carolina I, I, I don't know but they do look pretty darn good they are as I like to say the big bad defending champs right but obviously the real question is yeah. Virginia Tech LSU I think a lot of people well we've seen it all season long they they don't think Tech needs to be here they don't think Tech needs to win LSU's a three seed, Virginia Tech's a one seed. I mean, if you look at the odds, it should go in Tech's favor. Well, sure. And the bottom line is when you're the newcomer, when you're the new program who's never been here, and there are other programs who have more established histories, that's exactly what you're going to get from the general public. But that's okay. Yeah. That's okay because you are who you are once you go on the court. They don't play those games in the media. As much as we like to talk about them, we don't decide the games. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, it's what happens when you step on that court. And I think you've seen, because you've covered them all year long, you've absolutely seen what Virginia Tech is capable of. I don't think LSU is much different than a lot of the other teams Virginia Tech has played this year, including, as you mentioned, uh, a day ago, Tennessee. Tennessee, yeah. That's what Kayla King said, is that they all um, in the SEC kind of play a similar style of ball, whereas Tech, they it's kind of like a dual-threat quarterback, you know? They can bring it inside. Liz Kitley does not play back to the basket. She can turn around, pop it in your face. And then if that's not working, which, uh, you know, LSU does have a couple more tall players than Tennessee did, then they could push it outside and they have threats in Georgia Amore, Kayla King, and uh, uh, DeAsia Gregg who can pop it at any given time. So I think that Tech is more versatile on offense, but LSU might be more physical. Well, and, and to, to that point, I think this game is going to be sided on the defensive end. Yeah. And I think, does Virginia Tech – have the defensive stoppers who can take care of a couple really skilled athletic players on LSU's team. A year or two ago, I would have gone, I'm not sure if they have the size and strength. Now I think they do. Some, some young lady named Taylor Soul is pretty gar darn good on the defensive end. I haven't seen anyone make her look really bad. That said, she may have the toughest assignment tonight. We'll see if she can handle it. Yeah, her matchup, of course, is against LSU's Angel Reese, who is one of the most dynamic players, definitely in her class, but just beyond right. in, in all of all of college basketball right now. Six foot three, extremely aggressive, extremely physical. And one thing that the girls in the locker room said yesterday is that she's really good at getting her own rebounds. And that's actually a weakness I've seen on Virginia Tech is going in for the rebound because they don't have a deep bench. So if you have to kind of risk foul trouble going up for it and just letting the other team have it and and getting back on defense they're always going to take the defensive card unless it's a wide open look so you they will have to be more aggressive at the rim tonight going after angel reese's buckets and if she doesn't make it getting in there boxing out and making sure they get a clean rebound with no fouls i'm frankly curious about the rotation and, and how they're going to rotate defensively on some of these players because obviously when you have to play physical their fouls are called and you don't want to get your your key players in mm -hmm. foul trouble so I think, again, this is where, you know, Coach Brooks is Coach Brooks. He's going to have to feel the moment and move in the players when he needs to, uh, make sure he subs at the right times and uh, goes to that bench because you don't want to get anyone in foul trouble. And that's, and that's what LSU does. Mm -hmm. They're so physical, people tend to foul them a lot. South Carolina, too, but yeah. LSU does the same. We saw a taste of that against Ohio State. You know, I mean, it felt like every time they were aggressive at the rim, there was a foul called and there was a point. I mean, Kayla King fouled out. There was a point where Liz Kitley, I mean, she had the lowest amount of fouls, believe it or not, but there were three fouls, two fouls, a lot of girls were getting swapped in and out, but they were able to make it work, and he is a, he's a, obviously a smart coach, he knows when to sub in and out, he knows when to take DeAsia and Kay on a trailer, um, move them in and out with T, with T Soul, Kayla King, and you know, make it work, and they all are so defensively tough that you really don't miss a beat, even when Georgia Amor went down against right. Ohio State, didn't miss a beat, you would never know. 
Well, that's going to be the key, I think. And I am curious, like most people, I think, to watch that evening game. It's easy to look at South Carolina on TV and go, wow, this is a really cool team. They're big, they're strong, they're physical. I kind of want to see them against a really skilled team like Iowa and kind of see what they can do. Me too. Uh, I'm curious. I think it's a really interesting Final Four. We've got new faces. We've got fresh faces, new blood, as they say. Um, for years, it was Connecticut. It was Stanford. Back in the day, it was Texas. You know, you get used to the same people, even all the way back in the day, Louisiana Tech. This is all new blood almost. And so South Carolina, only eight years since their first Final Four, is kind of the old guard now. Yeah. And everyone else is the new team. So I'm kind of curious to see how this goes down. Really exciting time. At the end of the day, this is amazing for women's basketball. The fact that ticket prices are so much, that people are flocking to Dallas to watch these women play. It's it's going to be a really cool environment, and it kind of makes all of us women's basketball fans emotional because it's like there were times when oh, yeah. these teams couldn't even sell a ticket in their own arena, and now they're at the Final Four. Yeah, it's awesome. We've got a half-hour special coming up at 5.30. You want to tune in for that. Uh, we're probably just a few minutes away now. In the meantime, this is Brooke Leonard. I'm John Apicello. We're live at the Final Four, and we'll see you at Chase for the Championship coming up at 5.30 on WSLS. See you then.